What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. In this one, I'm gonna show you two ways of interpreting a reference photo. Now, the way I got this idea was I was giving a watercolor lesson and the student tried doing something that's kind of in the middle, so not going with very clear light and shadow conditions. Now, that's okay, but what I wanna show you in this video is how you take a reference photo that has potential and uh, shift the light and shadow conditions to your advantage to make it more interesting. So first we're gonna look at how to create a light and shadow uh, conditions of depth, creating depth and blurring the details in the background. Second, we're gonna show you what to do. I'm gonna show you what to do when the, the building is lighter than the sky. So the sun comes kind of from behind us. Here it comes from in front of us, kind of against the light. Here it comes from behind us casting a very strong light. So let's take it to the table, analyze the reference photo and see how we're gonna achieve that. Okay, so hopefully here you can see the reference photo. Now this idea came up during the uh, watercolor private lesson I was giving. Uh, you uh, can see in the reference that the tower is on the left side lighter than the sky and on the right side darker than the sky. Now what the student did was kind of taking a middle of the road approach. What I did is change it up to make it clearer what we're looking at. So. With this kind of thing, if you look at the left side of the tower, it's lighter than the sky. And if you look at the right side, it's darker than the sky. So I decided to take one of those and exaggerate them. So the first example, we're kind of uh, moving the light source behind the tower to create an interesting depth. So you see the tower is light and you can see here in the pencil sketch as well. And this is dark and this does this is very obvious in the reference photo. You can see it that the stone wall is much darker than the tower. Okay. And on this approach, we go with the other way around. We bring the light source from behind us, so we get the tower very well lit uh, compared to the sky. And that way we recreate this beautiful contrast that you do see again in the reference photo. Okay, and the rest is kind of interpretive. I'm changing things on the, on, along the way. But the idea is how do I take this reference photo that's fine, it's good, it's interesting, and turn it into a clear... Uh, painting for the viewer to understand what they're looking at because sometimes if you just translate it one for one you won't get that same result okay so with that being said let's get started with the demo so with this uh, example we'll take the more simplistic uh, kind of interpretive method of just um, layering it creating depth okay so uh, this uh, stone wall is coming through here and the drawing here is so simple uh, that I don't want to cut it out, at least from this first part, we will cut it out of the next part. So here we go, we have this wall, we're going to add the details later on, and then we've got the tower kind of reaching towards here, like so. And we don't need much, again, you don't need as much detail, especially in these kinds of uh, very loose interpretations, so kind of like that and now we're ready to paint this so we'll start painting and again the approach is very simple I'm gonna simplify all of this uh, the sky is gonna be white because it's fairly light in the reference so I'm just gonna make it white the building here in the background uh, is gonna be a little darker and it's gonna be kind of in the shadow so not an awful lot of details here uh, it's like painting against the Sun really uh, and I don't need much water so here we go uh, cool temperature relatively and I'm just starting to place in the different details. It has this thing here at the top, this decoration thing. There's a fence here and I'm putting everything in one go. The reason for that is simplicity. I'm gonna keep this fairly simple as it's in the background, okay? This is really important. So here we go around that kind of a wall, just negative paint around it. And after that, we're gonna allow this a few moments to dry. I got it a little crooked, but that's fine. We're gonna allow this a few moments to dry before we continue working on the stone wall itself, okay? But this is all there is to it, really. I'm gonna continue this uh, towards the right and add a couple of decorations like the top of the uh, wall kind of thing, okay? Now we're gonna allow this to dry. It's gonna dry much lighter and then we'll come back and work on this section. So this one's now almost fully dry. I'm gonna start working on the wall. Before that, I do wanna uh, start indicating some of the wall's shapes. So here we have uh, this kind of a, um, I don't know how, what you'd call it, what's the professional lingo for that but you know these parts that go up and down uh, that help with the protection here 
and the, the closer we, the farther away from us, the thinner these gaps become. Now this is again almost entirely dry. So I'm gonna come back and start warming things up a little. And uh, we're gonna do the whole wall much darker, okay? I'm just mixing all three primaries. I have like a quinacridone rose here, uh, nicolazo yellow and phthalo blue. But I'm gonna keep this one warmer. Okay, that's the key here because uh, I want this to appear to be closer, okay? And I'm just gonna start, I need a lot of paint actually for this stage because uh, adding a bit of both primaries, I also have here some kind of a perlin red, almost cadmium. Uh, but we're, we're gonna need a lot because we're gonna cover all of this section up in one go, okay? So I'm just starting to put in the fence. The most important part to get right is the edges, I would say, so just make sure the shapes here make some kind of sense. I'm gonna need to darken it up ever so slightly, a little blue, a little uh, red, and the parts that are gonna be darker are the gaps between the steps, okay, the, or the stages or whatever you want to call this thing, and we're gonna do our best. I'm gonna make this a little different just so that it works with the rest of the edge that we've established earlier like that. I'm gonna get a bit of an uneven wash, that's fine. And I'm gonna start real fast doing some wet and wet. So a bit of uh, the blue and red. And you see here, I'm placing in these shadows what you'd call a la prima. I'm not, I'm barely allowing uh, it's time to dry. I'm not doing it in uh, dry, I mean wet on dry glazes. I'm just putting it immediately. And then the other side of the wall. And by doing that, what we did was kind of create a sense of depth and separation between the back part, which is the tower, and the front part. Okay, and the result here isn't spectacular. Again, that's not the goal. The goal here is to work on how we interpret the scene. Now, while this is wet, I can start adding in some more wet and wet details and just to touch up on some things, make sure they're, uh, they're tight, okay? But now what we've essentially created is three layers, okay? The front and back. Now some of you will like the second approach better, some of you will like the first approach, that's fine. Doesn't really uh, matter. Both of these work and get the job done. But the point is, how do we interpret a scene? Now let's move on to the second example. Okay, so with this second example, we're gonna take yet again a different approach. This time we're exaggerating the fact that the tower is lighter than some sections of the sky. And how are we gonna do that? Uh, by negative painting, okay? So uh, we'll start with the sky. It's gonna be darker than the tower. And uh, that way we'll bring out the, the actual tower, okay? So I'm just getting started here. Nice blue sky adhering to the shape of the wall here. That's a little more important because this time we'll actually uh, see some of its details. So I'm trying to establish some kind of form, okay? And again, you have to visualize very carefully before you even start painting where you're gonna paint and what you're gonna paint. So I already did that visualization work. Uh, it's your turn to either watch this video once, rewind and then follow with me uh, or learn, study the scene, okay? Uh, so here we go, and that way we establish the building as a lighter shape, okay? Now what I want to do is add, while this is still wet, a couple of shadows on the right side of the building. They may not turn out perfect, but that's fine, kind of while it's still wet, so here and there. And maybe on the wall, like so. Got it to blend a little too much, but that's fine, okay? It's gonna make sense. In the grand scheme of things, as long as the building is lighter than the foreground, okay? Now we're gonna allow this a couple of seconds to dry, then I'm gonna come back and start establishing the details on the uh, this kind of a stone wall that's a little closer to us. So now this is almost fully dry, it's time to start showing in the details in the stone wall. Now I just added a couple of touches of paint to establish some shapes on the tower itself. Okay, because if you look at the reference, it's there. Now I'm gonna start warming things up a bit. So using some quinacridone um, burnt orange, a bit of the reds. I don't really care about the specific colors, but I just wanna warm it up because it's closer to us, okay? Um, and, and I'm starting at the top usually with warmer colors because it's uh, allegedly close to the sun, okay? Not necessarily. Now uh, these should be a little darker than the skywash. 
but it's not the end of the world if they aren't. This isn't the emphasis of this scene, really. The emphasis is on the tower being kind of lighter than... Um, lighter than basically the sky. That's it. So now I'm establishing already where these stone fences end, where their shape, that this kind of up and down shape ends. So everything under that should be... Um, should be darker. And then you see I all I have to do is really do these brush marks and the, the viewer will understand what they're looking at. Okay, you don't need much more than that. Now what I want to do is this is warm. Now as we get to the bottom here to the ground, um, I want to start cooling it off a bit, just a bit to show the viewer that this part is a little cooler. Now we have also the um, the, the cast shadows by the fence uh, that we're gonna place up here, okay? And when we're done with this, we'll actually do a couple of finishing touches on both sketches because um, I think it'll improve them. So kind of up and down like that. And now we can do, as before, a bit of wet and wet details. So a bit of that kind of thing here as well. The, the place that's farther from us gets a little darker, that's fine. Um, we could also add a couple of bricks, but that's exactly the touches I want to do later on. Okay, so we're not going to overdo this now. And this is pretty much uh, done. And as long as you can tell uh, that you're looking at a wall and then the tower at the back, that's fine. Uh, I could darken these up a little, but I don't want to overdo it, so we'll stop now. So now, real quick, we're going to do some final touches on what we have so far. And this is going to be beautiful because it will contrast some dry brush strokes alongside this very blurry kind of um, layer that we've created. So I'm drying up my rigger brush and I'm just pulling a couple of lines through here. Um, and I'm trying to get rid of most of the paint uh, from the brush. Otherwise, it's going to be too striking like some of the lines that I already got here, but that's fine. Uh, and now what's cool about this is that you can play around with the direction of the line. So if I go like this here, you see how your um, brain kind of interprets it as different directions on the wall. Obviously, I'm exaggerating it a bit, uh, but that's fine. This side as well could benefit from some of that kind of touches. Uh, and I like to sometimes also add here, because what that does is it helps to establish the shape of the surface. So just a couple of touches and you can tell that this is a road that goes inside. Now again, this is pretty dark in order to create some contrast with this tower at the back. So you can't see too many of the details here, but that's fine. You could also cheat a bit, quote unquote, and actually uh, draw the line that separates between the directions of the, of the stone wall. That's also an option. It's not really cheating. Uh, so if you want to do that, it may mean that you're taking a more illustrative approach, not necessarily trying to go for realism. So that's it for this one. I think it's done. Now we're going to do the same kind of finishing touches for uh, the second one. And again, keeping it fairly simple, but here it's going to be even more beautiful because we're actually able to uh, see the lines here. It's not too dark. And uh, again, just a couple of uh, broken up brush strokes. I need to get rid of most of the paint here, really. As much as you get rid of it, you'll still have some. So it's a bit tricky getting the, the right um, kind of relationship between water and paint. But here I think I'm getting closer. And once you get it, you want to make the most out of it and use it as much as possible. So just adding a couple of broken brush, uh, brush strokes like that. And here, the contrast with the direction is going to be even prettier, okay? So now I have no paint, that's nice. That's nice, the brush is working with me. Uh, here we go, like so. And your brain can interpret it uh, as what it is. And if I compare my result to what I did during the lesson, uh, I think the result in the lesson is definitely better because here, I just have more to think about. So apologies about that, you know, the, the camera and the light and the... Um, and the fact that I'm recording, so it's a bit different than when you do a lesson. Uh, but hopefully the result is still clear. A couple of bricks here. One thing I do want to add to this example is that tree here on the right. I think it'll be nice to break off the blue and orange with some green. So a bit of uh, the blue and a bit of yellow. And we're going to keep this again very simple. So I'm just placing in a couple of these shapes, abstract shapes again of... Um, blue and yellow 
And this is pretty much all we need. We can add a couple of just quick strokes like that, which will indicate to us that it's indeed a some kind of a plant and just pull off one of these to really show it. And this will contrast nicely with the tower. You could go overboard and cross it. I don't want to cross it here. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And hopefully that works out for the uh, end composition. One last thing I forgot that I really like the way it looks. So I'm going to do it uh, is a bit of these kinds of details on the road here, just to help uh, indicate the direction it's headed. Okay. Again, it could be <laughs> considered as a bit of cheating, but that's fine. I like that way of doing things. So hopefully that clears things up. You can see the two different approaches and how to keep this interesting and not just stick to what you see in the reference photo because then you're neither here nor there and you want to sometimes take a stand when it comes to light. So essentially in the original the light came kind of from the side and what we did is in one example we took it to the back so it's behind the reference uh, against the light and on the other example we kind of took it to the front so now the, the light conditions are more striking. This is something I very often do when I paint outside especially and it's worth practicing doing this kind of thing. So now let's wrap up this vid. So this is it for this one. I really hope you enjoyed it and maybe at least your thought, your brain is now open to the idea of changing the reference photo dramatically uh, to benefit the message you're trying to convey. And again, when you try to go kind of in the middle, you won't always get a clear result for the viewer, which is why we're doing this process. And hopefully we were able to create a sense of depth here and a good sense of light and shadow here. So I want to thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video. It really helps me promoting my videos here on YouTube and I'm trying to reach and help as many people as possible and also subscribe and hit the bell button because if you don't, you won't get notifications and I hear from people that they miss out on new videos. Thank you so much. I will see you again in another one real soon.